This video will lead you through the process of creating an easy backup to the cloud storage provider Backblaze. After the intro, we are taking a closer look on the cheap B2 storage plan and the free backup software duplicacy. Please take a look at the chapters if you want to skip a part of this video. For this video, I have chosen Backblaze B2 storage because they offer a transparent and cheap pricing plan. You can visit their website and use the calculator to calculate the upcoming costs according to your backup needs. At the moment, I am using Hetzner storage boxes. Unfortunately, they only offer block storage plans. In this plot, you can see that the storage costs from Backplace B2 are always cheaper compared to Hetzner storage boxes. To be clear, if you have to restore, you will have to pay for the downloaded files at Backplace, though this plot is not very accurate, but a restore should not happen too often. Downloading 1 terabyte of data will cost you $10 as one-time payment. Let's now start the backup procedure. We are using the Duplicacy Client interface version, which is free and can be downloaded on GitHub. You will find the link in the video description. I will backup my download folder. This is of course useless, but it's only meant for demonstration purposes. To be able to backup the Backplace B2 cloud storage, you have to create a bucket. A bucket is a kind of a root folder for your backup. The name of the bucket is unique at Backplace B2. I named the bucket Useful with Demo. To enhance your security, you should create a separate API key for each bucket to minimize the damage in case of key loss or theft. The API key is only displaced once, so you have to copy it now and store it securely. Having all these data together, we can now initialize the storage with duplicacy. We use the init command and the correct syntax for the B2 storage. The command failed because I missed to input a snapshot ID. The snapshot ID is a free text field. We can now enter the application ID and the password of this ID. The storage password is the encryption password. Choose a secure one. Best practice is to generate it with your password manager. The storage is now ready for backups, but with one major disadvantage. It needs user interaction for the passwords and cannot be scheduled to run in user absence. Therefore, we are now storing the passwords in the duplicacy preferences file with the set command. These passwords are stored in plain text and you should make sure that they cannot be stolen. In the duplicacy wiki you can find the keywords on how to use the set command. We are now storing three different information. The application ID from your API key, the API key itself, the storage password for the encryption. After executing the three set commands, you can find the information stored in plain text in the duplicacy preferences file. We are now able to execute the command duplicacy backup without any interaction needed and the backup can start. After finish the backup, we can use the check command to make sure that all chunks for this snapshot do exist. Executing the backup command once more will create a new revision. If a new file is part of the backup, it will only be part of the new revision. 
As we can see here, the size of the uploaded files is comparable to the size of the original download folder. You're now able to use the Windows Task Scheduler to schedule regular backups with duplicacy. I would suggest to create a small batch script and run it on a daily basis. Let's now do a quick restore test. In case of total data loss, you have to repeat the init command from the beginning of this video. I will skip this and just copy the duplicacy folder to my restore location. The init command does the same, it creates this folder with the information about the storage. The first command to execute is the duplicacy list command to get the number of the latest revision. Revision 3 is our revision which we like to restore. In my case, the Windows Defender blocked the restore with its ransomware protection. Disabling it temporarily allowed me to start the restore. The files are now retrieved from the B2 storage and I can even speed up the process by using the threads option to increase parallelism of the download. At the end we can compare the original folder with the target folder. They are looking identical. Hope you enjoyed this video. I am still a small channel and it would be great to get support in form of likes and subscriptions.